Welcome to my chow line. I'm Tracy Lingle. Join me today as we start on a new series I'm starting here called The Mobile Kitchen. I'm here with the Tackett Family Farm and Ranch in Lincolnton, Georgia, joined by Chad Tackett, owner and operator of the Tackett Family Farm and Ranch, where they raise grass-fed longhorns. Today we're going to be cooking some of those, and to tell us more about the meat we're cooking today is Chad Tackett. So, so Chad, tell us about this meat we got here. So this is Texas Longhorn cattle, 100% uh, grass-fed. Um, they get nothing but well water, uh, minerals, and grass hay during the winter. Um, these are, we do a lot of tomahawk ribeyes. Um, very popular, a lot of people love them. I get them sometimes cut up to three pounds. Um, these are two that are about a little over one pound each. A um, little bit of marbling in them. You know, grass-fed longhorn is going to be leaner, but it doesn't mean it's completely devoid of any fat. There is some marbling on them. And these look really, really good. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to do a, a basic of salt, pepper, garlic on these. Uh, I'm using some uh, Grill Your Ass Off seasonings. I got salt, pepper, garlic, but there's other seasonings they have as well. They have their gunpowder steak and brisket seasoning, which has a little more sugar in it. Um, and it's it's got a, it gives a nice good crust on it because it's got a lot of pepper pepper flakes in it And then we have also the there's the ma deuce steak seasoning, which has a lot of garlic and um, Some other uh, let's see. What was it again? white sugar and it's got a lot of garlic and uh, Worcestershire sauce in it So but we're gonna use the salt pepper garlic on this and then we'll use a compound butter on it as it's cooking We're gonna sear it and then low and slow the rest of the way so way Sounds great. All right. Looking forward to it, man. It's in good yep. hands with you. All right. Well, I'm going to season this up with the salt, pepper, garlic, and then we'll get back and we'll, we'll uh, start cooking. It's really fun to cook these with the bone. Um, I know it's mostly ornamental, but, you know, and it's good oh, yeah. to have something to pick up and gnaw on. Oh, yeah. And I'd also like to make sure that I season liberally because that's a lot, large chunk of meat, and if, if we're going to let these sit and rest before we grill them, to, so that the seasonings has a time to so, soak into the meat a little bit. We like I like to give it 15 to 20 minutes with the seasoning on it because the salt is going to help sweat out some of that moisture and then it's going to start sucking it back in and it's also going to suck in those seasonings and stuff with it and it's also going to help with the give it a nice crust. Yep, and one of the biggest mistakes people make is not using enough seasoning um, uh, with, with steak especially, especially when you're going with a thick cut. Uh, that's one of the things that I always try to recommend to everybody is make sure you season it. Get all the sides of it, let it let it sit, and then give it that time. So, all right, so we're going to get the fire started, and we'll uh, we'll get back in just a minute. So, so Chad, we're going to go ahead and throw these on. Um, while I'm while I'm searing these off on the grill, we got the our fire going on the sides and a little bit on the edges, so we, that way we have a, a cool spot in the middle. But I'm going to sear these off real quick. Um, and then get them on, get them on going low and slow. We also have kind of what is this? The sausage? Uh, that is just a mild sausage. It's a uh, grass-fed Longhorn beef in a beef casing. So it's all beef, uh, no no pork or anything. It might be the last of this batch. So I well, might have to have some more made. Yeah. Well, this we're gonna be snacking on this while uh, later. S some snacking stuff. Some snacking stuff. We're gonna go ahead and get these on. And while I'm grilling these off, will you tell me? You were you were a veteran. You you are a veteran. You served. Um, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, and a couple of, how long have you been in service? So, and, or were, were you in service? I was in from uh, 22 years, from 1990, so, so originally a Cold War vet to start out with, and then that transitioned into uh, Gulf War era, you know, uh, GWAT, Global War on Terror. Um, I retired in 2012, um, and retired here in, in Georgia. Uh, my last duty assignment was here in Georgia. My last two duty assignments were here in Georgia uh, for my wife and I. So we decided to stay here. And then uh, a couple years before I retired, we bought this property out here. And we weren't 100% sure what we were going to do with it. Um, I knew I wanted to have at least a couple cows. So we ended up getting a couple to start out with, about five. Um, and it just sort of snowballed from there. Because you know what they say, you know, once you have five, you might as well have 30 or 40. Um, uh, so, so one of the great things that I that you I remember you telling me about was when we had a drought um, last year, or the year yeah. before, that um, that 
having Longhorns benefited you over the, some of the other like black so and stuff? So the, well? they're very drought tolerant, very heat tolerant. Um, come out here in the middle of summer in Georgia when it's 100 degrees out and the humidity's, you know, you'll see the black Angus cows under the shade trees just looking at me like, why are we here? And then the Longhorns will be out running around like, yeah, this is nothing. And we do have a Facebook and Instagram page. We just tack it family ranch. Um, you'll find it and, uh, you know, you can get a hold of us there. I'll, just put ask a, us. I'll put a link for his uh, his Instagram and his Facebook page in the uh, in the description of this video. Um, also, we'll, he'll be sharing this video on his Facebook page. So if you're seeing this, you're probably on his page too. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna let this kind of ride now. We kind of got it off the heat. Got it. Uh, one of the great things about these Santa Maria grills, and thank you for letting me use your grill, by the way, um, is that we can adjust for the temperature and Absolutely. all that stuff and still get the heat but not get all the fire and and there's probably more than a dozen ways to cook a steak and i've probably tried them all um but i will say my personal favorite is always over charcoal over hardwood over flame there's just nothing better than having a little fire underneath it um, i intentionally picked some smaller um tomahawks today to, to make sure that they would get done in time and we wouldn't be here all day perfect get although you know it's not a bad place to be right now. We got no. the cicadas going. We've got the weather cleared up finally. A lot of rain yesterday and last night. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. We were expecting. I was expecting to be overcast and be worried about rain and stuff the whole time while we're like we picked today because it was the the, one the least day, rainy the least rainy day this weekend. So yeah, it's it's actually Cinco de Mayo. There, we, that's a good color right there. Yeah, and yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's a perfect color. We're using a Rectech uh, Wild Side. It's no longer in production. A uh, local company uh, here in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, I bought this a few years ago when they first came out. And uh, it's one of my favorite as far as that goes. I have one of their uh, pellet grills as well that I use a lot. Sometimes I'll smoke the bigger steaks for a while and then bring them over and sear them. But preferably I like to just straight on the fire. Yeah. That there's something about fire. It is. It's primal. It is very primal. And, and I, I love the crust. And I, I, when he gets a good picture of this later, you'll see the, the crust on that is beautiful with a, a good fire sear. Yeah. All right. So we'll uh, go ahead and we've had these resting for a little bit. We'll go ahead and cut them. Look at that. Perfect medium rare. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice and juicy. They've been resting for 10 minutes or so. Well, one of the most important things in, in cooking a steak is taking the time to rest. Same thing with brisket or anything else is that rest time is often overlooked. Again, perfect medium rare. Beautiful. All right, let's grab a piece of it and let's try this out real quick. Find a piece. Here we go. Cheers. Mmm. Juicy, tender, can't beat beef. And that's grass-fed longhorn. Yeah, that doesn't even taste like, so the last time I had grass-fed, it bought it from the store or whatever, it had like this, almost like what people call gamey. Right. It had a funky, that's the fat cap on the end. Well, the grass-fed sometimes will have more of a, a earthy tones to it. Whereas this, you know, I, like I said, I love it. Longhorn has really come out really good for me. There's a very strong beefy flavor to it that you don't get a lot of supermarket beef. Mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons when I started raising them, I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to keep doing this, even if it's just for myself. It was really good. <laughs> man, and tender too. Nice and juicy and tender. Yeah. A lot of times what people will think the, that if it's lean, it's going to be tougher. Right. 
with um you know i do like to cook the grass fed to the rare to medium rare side you can cook it more just if you're going to do so be gentle and do it incremental um i don't let i don't tell people you can do that you can't do that unless you're doing like a unless you're doing like a a brisket or something once you get it home do with it as you please but this is the best way for the chew the flavor mm -hmm. comes out perfect and then we, i literally could sit here and just Yep. Eat chunks of this or gnaw on that bone. That's well, the great thing about the bone is you can pick this up when you're sitting at home and just gnaw on that. I'm going to try some of this sausage out. We already had a few pieces of it, but man. Mm. That sausage is pretty good. And that's all beef sausage? All beef, including the casing. The, I'll probably have some more done this summer. Okay, well, we're going to package this up and we're going to eat some more of this. And then we'll get back and we're going to have a story time. Chad's going to sit down with us, have a cigar, have a drink, and we'll uh, we'll share his story. Leader or something. Well, y'all taste really good. Oh, my goodness. Mm. You know, they talk about getting fresh beef and being close. Doesn't get any closer than this. No. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. I'm eyeballing you like I eyeball bacon. Mm. It's good, man. <laughs> that's a little dark, but man, that's good. Butter and this mango. I'm about to get some of that. The Chipotle, it's Kinder's. I got it at Walmart because mm -hmm. I was going to do an infused butter, but I was like, I saw this and I was like, you know what? I want to try that. So He's I put it with the butter on put top of it. Put a little bit of, of that with some, uh, some good butter. Good butter. Kerry Gold, grass fed. Kerry Gold, grass fed butter. And mm. I'm going to tell you, that, that just, that's a great topping. You don't need a sauce, a little salt, pepper, garlic, and, and some of that butter. Mm. You know, typically I will throw like a little pad of butter while I'm letting it rest, but he put it on a little bit sooner, and I think I might start doing that a little bit more, throwing it on while it's still on the grill, and letting that, it melt, hit the coals. Yep. Well, that's that's what I that's what I've learned, because you know I'm a fan of Guga. Yeah, I watch Guga too. But. If, you know, if you're opposed to rare, medium rare, you're missing out. <laughs> I know some mm. people will go, well, you know, I'll cook it a little bit extra, but I'm just telling you, that came out perfect. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't want to go back to real life now. Can I come move out here with you? I, you know. If we can eat like this all the time, I'll stay here. Yeah. I don't I, need vegetables. I could probably keep you, keep you busy. <laughs> I can't afford to pay you, but... I'll just make steak every day. You laugh, you know, there's a joke like, you can't eat steak every day. I'm like, yeah, I can. Yeah. Well, one of, the, one of the things I was thinking about was, you know, that carnivore diet. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's what we're doing right now is carnivore. And I'm okay with it. You don't I ain't hating it. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's really good. Well, we've pretty much destroyed two pounds of ribeye and notice it didn't shrink up too much either no it didn't that's also because it has a lower fat content mm -hmm. the more fat it has it renders down especially if it's got a lot of intermuscular fat like i said it's not devoid of fat you can see there's fat you know in oh, there man it's just not well and that's why i use the butter because fat is flavor mm -hmm. you know but a good butter is good for you. And when you do it that way, you can control what you're putting on there and how much. You can go, right. I'm going to get the salt-free butter because there's already salt in the, mm -hmm. the stuff. You can control what you're putting on there. Um, and, and you know, if you are on a diet or you are watching what you eat, yep. you're in the wrong spot. Well, a, but still, <laughs> you can control the type of butter and everything you put on. You mentioned grass-fed butter, you know, salt-free because you don't want to add any more salt to it. Damn, that came out good. No, yeah. Well, one of the other things too is this is where it came from. Yeah. You go to Costco, you go to Walmart, you go to Kroger, Publix, whatever, K, I, uh, IEB or a KEB or whatever it is out in Texas. You know, you don't necessarily know where that beef came well, from. We've pretty much polished this off. Yeah, I'm we gonna... destroyed that. We did everything but chew on the bone. <laughs> that's probably gonna happen <laughs> all right well uh we'll get set up get this cleaned up and uh we'll uh 
get ready for story time. All right, Chad. So now we're we're gonna sit down, and have a cigar, and have some uh, yeah, have some horse soldier bourbon and some warfighter to cigars, warfighter tobacco, um, and then you're gonna tell us your story. All right. Tackett Family Ranch. There you go. Cheers. Cheers. Glad you came out today. It's been good. And that steak came out perfect, I think. Oh, yeah. You know, on, on the YouTube videos and whatnot, people are always going to go, oh, this tastes so good. We, we destroyed that. Just sitting out in the field, we just destroyed the steak by hand. So, you served. You served in uh, multiple theaters, multiple campaigns. Um, I know you said you were uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, GWAT, original GWAT? Yes. 2002 yep. was my first trip to Afghanistan. Okay. So then also, but before that, because you've, you, were, you were in the military for over 20 years, right? Yeah, I did 22 years. 22 years. So in that time, were th were there other locations? I mean, that you that you went. Um, I did some of the the normal overseas stuff like Germany. Uh, I was even stationed in England, which is not as normal. Um, but while I was in Germany, we got called up for Bosnia, the uh, uh, Operation um, Joint Endeavor. Oh. So that was one that you don't hear about too much. But um, we basically loaded up our trucks on a train and um, rode down through. Hungary and everything, and got to uh, Croatia, offloaded in Croatia, and then drove into Bosnia. There's a, a huge history behind why the Bosnians and the Croats and the Serbs are all fighting each other. Goes back decades, but um, basically they signed a peace accord and said, We want, you know, American troops or international troops are going to go down and uh, break them up and split up the sides. Um, and what was interesting about that was this is, we didn't have like up armored Humvees. We didn't have any of that stuff that, that, you know, that I ended up later having in, in like, uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. We had just our standard European green camo, soft, soft skin Humvees. Uh, and I had a, a five, seven, seven track. And I can remember, uh, my commander at the time saying, uh, well, we're going to line the bottom of your track with sandbags so that if we hit minefields you're going to just drive through and i was like i'm not really cool with that idea <laughs> it, it, i remember uh, one of the guys in my because i was in a combat engineer unit and one of the guys that was in bosnia was telling me about that where they would just they just put sandbags in yep. the bottom of the they would and it's if they could grab it they would find some steel plate to put underneath it and then put more sandbags on top of it that's interesting yeah, pretty much run what you brung. And then um, we ended up, um, and there's a great, great history behind this. There's a great, um, some great footage online. Uh, we crossed the Sava River. We built, the, the Army built, the combat engineers built a bridge, a floating bridge, series of, of like rafts that are connected across this. Well, they had like a thousand year flood that year. And of course, it's December end of December, beginning of January. So, and this is the Balkans. So if you've not been cold before, the Balkans is like Siberia cold. So you, I had every piece of snivel gear the army issued me on. I had polypros, I had layers upon layers with Gore-Tex and everything else. And this, these poor engineers got flooded out and it floated chunks away and they had to rebuild the bridge. Oh, and wow. so like you're pulling up and there's a GP medium tent that you can only see the top of the pole. And you'd see like a duffel bag floating down the, the river. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was crazy. We were offering them like, hey, do you want an extra t-shirt? And they're like, no, we got stuff. We're good. Um, but as we're driving onto this thing, the, the guy that's guiding you up basically says, hey, if your vehicle stalls or anything, just stand fast. We'll come and disconnect you, push you out, and push a new section of bridge in to keep everybody going. So we're like, well, what happens to the vehicle that, that stalled that you're breaking free? And they're like, ah, we'll, we'll come down down river and get you later oh wow so he's like whatever you do don't stall your vehicle and don't you know and these aren't i think my track was uh vietnam era 
track when I looked at the serial number. Like, it had been rebuilt in the 70s. Oh, wow. Uh, so we were a little nervous, but we had the heaters cranked. We made it across. Uh, and it was like a fly. I mean, we flew because we were trying to keep up with the tanks. And we didn't know what to expect. You know, this wasn't like it was. Yeah, they signed the agreement, but we rolled in and it was just like, well, it is what it is. It's it's who's going to be there. And, you know, we don't know if they're going to fight us or gonna shoot at us or, or what. So um, it was an interesting time. It was an entire year living at a campsite, too. So I lived up on a hilltop. I can still remember the grid coordinates of this hilltop that overlooked uh, not far from the sat in the thumb. But and we, we put a tent up. And we were eating, we were heating uh, MREs, and we were heating up T rats. We had immersion heaters, uh, like a garbage can with a talk about sous vide, garbage can with a uh, can of fuel that drips. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, so as it lights and drips and fires, That's it heats up so the water stoves. in the garbage can. So metal garbage can with a fire and dripping open flame. Talk about dangerous. In a tent too. Yeah, we had, I had them in the tent, too. That's funny. You can tell I don't smoke cigars all the time. I have a hard time keeping it lit. Well, you're also talking, too. That's that's part of the problem with, with enjoying a cigar with it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a good time keeping mine lit because I'm not talking much. But uh, you don't when you're talk, when you're actually having yeah. a conversation, <laughs> puffing on it. <laughs> but, yeah. But it's it's nice to sit back and enjoy a cigar with you because it's, you well, know. Well, it's a, you know... Uh, so, so they used to give us these things called tea rats and it looks like if you've ever gone to the store and gotten a lasagna in a metal pan that you pop in the oven, imagine that only it's sealed. You have to use a can opener to open it. And so you get this box and it would have like chicken, whatever, chicken and gravy and a bunch of other stuff where we had like green eggs and ham. It'd be like this Western omelet with chunks in it. And what you do is you just take that whole pan and throw it in that garbage can and boil it. And then when you're done, you pull it out, which is hot metal. So you have to wear like welding gloves and you have to cut it open with a can opener without slicing your wrists and cutting yourself. And then you're eating it and it, you know, prepackaged military food that's designed to last for a long time is usually very salty, very, not what I would call healthy. Mm -hmm. um, so we started out, I would take the chicken from the chicken and gravy, rinse it all off uh, cut it up into bits and cook it in a metal, like a wok that I had fashioned over our heater. And I would make like chicken fajitas. Nice. Um, then we found a local farmhouse not far from where we li uh, lived on this hill with a little Muslim family, uh, Muslim sir or Muslim Bosnian family. And they had chickens and goats and stuff. And so we started buying chicken eggs from them. And I would come up and I, for breakfast, I'd be up there making omelets in my little wok pan thing. And uh, we ended up actually getting a chicken from them, got a rooster from them, and I brought it up. And of course, I've got these calf scout guys with me and all these other guys, and they're like, what, what are you gonna do with the chicken? I'm like, we're gonna eat it. Cause it was still live at this point. Oh yeah, it was, it was, it was under, I walked up with it. Me and my, we had some interpreters. And so I walked back up the hill with the interpreter, <laughs> chicken under my arm. And I'm like, we're eating good. The meat's back on the menu tonight, boys. Uh, so we ended up, I, you know, had a little impromptu class on how to butcher a chicken, you know, dip it down in that immersion heater and take the feathers off. And after I had drained it and done all the, the other bits, so I'm putting chicken in this pan, again, making chicken fajitas. Uh, I had had somebody in Germany mail me tortillas in a care package. I had tortillas and I had a brick of cheese that I was shaving cheese off it, shredding cheese off it. Mm -hmm. And I had a thing of like lemon pepper and um, uh, Spanish Mexican seasonings. And so I'm up there making chicken fajitas and in the middle of the winter in Bosnia, there's like four feet of snow on the ground. And Man, those are probably the best chicken fajitas you ever had. They were, they were pretty good. Well, part of, part of that, what I've found with all this stuff is it doesn't have to be like off the chain good. Because when you're in a conditions like that, anything... Oh man, anything. anything one, a step above what you're having now is always going to be, well, oh my God, that was the best. I, I am not a chef. Never claimed to be one. But, you know, even going into the chow halls, and I'm like, oh, oh. they're doing the same thing again. Well, I would pick and choose stuff and then combine it differently than how they did it. Um, I'd get like chicken tenders, bring them off to the side, coat them with hot sauce and buffalo sauce type stuff, 
go get a wrap from one of the wrap tables if they had the sandwich tables and throw some lettuce and stuff in there and make like a buffalo chicken wrap so i'm sitting there eating that and dudes are like what where'd you get that and i'm like well i got the tenders over here and i got this over there and because as you can tell I like, <laughs> I like to eat i am i like to eat um so yeah that was uh you know i mean i've grilled every country i've been in we've grilled we've had grills set up in afghanistan we've had grills set up in in iraq you know throw something together and and you know or you if you ask nicely at most chow halls you can get some meat to go you know like he said earlier always be nice to your your chow people and your yeah. your medical people yeah doc and the mess sergeant always the guys the somebody who's who's a uh, middle to high ranking in the in the mess area yeah and and somebody that and keep doc happy and dude always protect doc and next one in line is always protect the the mess sergeant because mm -hmm. he's likely to get you good stuff whenever he gets oh yeah portioned out stuff he's like you treat him good he'll take care of you but yeah you know like i said bosnia was uh 95 we went in 95 and got there first and then the rotation started from 96 to 97 i think yeah somewhere in there it's, it's been a day or two but it's funny as i you know you've slept since then yeah well, I appreciate what you're doing, and I, I've part of the reason I started this channel was I wanted to I wanted to highlight veterans that have gone into the what, what I would consider the supply chain, food supply chain, right? Because because they're 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 you know they're moving on from their military careers, whether they served six years or you know or it's or, a it's a second calling, um, and I think vets a lot of vets do really well. Um, there's great resources. The USDA is partnering with Farmer Veteran Coalition, and there's a, a, even more on down. Um, but a lot of veterans still feel the need to serve. do something, to serve. It, it's Because it, it, it is, in a way, because if you volunteered to serve our country, to defend it, now you've gone into the... Yeah. Now you're serving the country again. Yeah. You're serving your local community, and you're still serving and, and that's one of the things you know that that I like is like the like veterans like back paddle brewing, like Farmer T down the road, and some of these other farmers, and other people that are in the supply chain, the guys that are growing it, yep, guys that are cooking it, guys that are you know starting businesses from scratch, like uh, Horse Soldier Bourbon, you know something to go with the food. You got um, Grill Your Ass Off seasonings. They're providing seasonings to go with your beef and with with you know. All along the process, the guys that are Absolutely. better owned businesses that are doing the grills, they're you know doing their charcoal, whatever it is, right? That that I want to highlight that because it's another step in the line of service because you don't ever really stop serving. If you're a veteran owned business making charcoal, please let me know. Absolutely, I'll buy some charcoal from you. Yeah, because that's that's the that's the to me I think that's one of the most important things that that veterans do is they. Even if it's subconscious, yeah, it's it's a subconscious thing to serve others, and something bigger than yourself. It, it is. Well, I appreciate you taking time, to smoke a cigar with me, dude. Let, it's always nice to here. see you, and, and I've known I've known Tracy for a long time now. So, yeah, uh, I've, I've I want to incorporate a lot of these friendships that I've accumulated uh, with veterans and all that stuff, and I want to make new ones too. Um, you know, one of the things I always tell people when when we're doing, you know, when I'm when I'm doing the, like on my normal channel or my normal, normal videos, I, I'm expressing somebody, I'm telling somebody a story that they've sent me. And when I get done, I always like, you know, if you have a story that you want to share, uh, I want to share it as well. Uh, because I think it's important for us to know we're not alone. Um, because I think that's what happens to a lot of veterans is yeah. my experience is it, it, as unique as it is, yours isn't the only one that's like that. Right. And, and you're not alone. And and a lot of the younger guys, I say younger, but a lot of the younger guys that came back from the different things, you know, it's not the 50s and it's not the 60s and it's not post-World War II. We're not going to just let me hop down to the VFW and hang out with my buddies. Yeah. It, that doesn't feel right to the younger veterans. Nothing mm. against the VFWs or anything. I'm just saying it's, it's a different generation. And that's what's great about the the YouTube videos and the internet and that sort of thing is I can go online and I watch different podcasts and stuff 
and it's yeah. veterans talking about veteran stuff. And, and sometimes I'm laughing my ass off because they're telling a funny story about something that happened. And sometimes it gets dark, but at the oh, same yeah. time, you're like, yeah, man, I've been there. I know that. I, oh yeah. I get it. Yeah. One of my favorite podcasts that I've been listening to that my wife hates that I listen to it is the unsubscribe podcast. I was thinking of the exact same one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and another one I listen to is the, is the freedom friends podcast. Yep. One of my buddies is he's on the freedom friends podcast and it's done by the warfighter tobacco guys. Um, well, you need to tag unsubscribe in this because I've been watching their videos for a while and, and I think we need to do, they do range days and they do all kinds of crazy stuff, but I think those guys need a break. We need to come out here to the farm somewhere and set up a, a pavilion with a grill and just sit around and grill and, yeah. and do this sort of thing. And well, it's therapeutic. It is. It is. It's, it's, that, it's one of those things. It's, it's, it, this is the way, because we've all been trauma bonded in a former fashion, right? through the military service, you know, I, I mean, you get guys from the Korean War, Vietnam, yeah. Grenada. I mean, I see that at the round canopy parachute team when we go down there for the thing. We have guys from all different ranges of conflicts, right? Special forces guys. And a lot of the stories yeah. are pretty much the same. Not not same as in the content, but same as in the, the, the experiences. Yeah. Some of the same kind of experiences. Yes. Each one had a different one as far as the location, uh, age, time frame, what time of year it was, all that kind of stuff. But So one of the reasons the um, when we go into another country and help rebuild their military, one of the reasons their military, like use the Iraq and the Afghanistan militaries, do not do as well as ours is because they don't go through a basic training like we did. Right. That trauma bonding of the commonality of we all went to basic, we all got our head shaved, we all got yelled at by some mean drill sergeant, we all snuck a snack out of the mess hall or whatever, we all got a blister when we marched to the range. That's You can put any veteran from any conflict area or any time of service and put them together in the room and if they don't like each other and they don't even know what to talk about, you can go, tell me about your drill sergeant. Yep. And he's going, oh, we had this guy, and he was this, or whatever. There is a commonality. Right. And when you have foreign armies that don't go through that, they don't have that. And so they don't have a sense of commonality. But, man, I really do appreciate this. I really appreciate you having me out. Um, good time. It was a good time. And I... I, I Very therapeutic. Yeah, and, and I think this is something that, that I, um, I really want to do this series. Uh, I want to yeah. go around. I want to meet some of the other veterans in the area. I, I, I want to go down and see John Jackson down in Middlesville. I want to see Farmer T. Um, I love what he's got going on with yep. his pigs. Because I what he's doing. And he's doing a great thing. And he's, he's, he's found a little niche, right? And he's selling to some restaurants with his whole... He does mm -hmm. a lot of whole pigs for whole roaster pigs and stuff. Yeah, and I've he, gotten them from him and cooked them whole on my rotisserie. Oh, man. That's just... To me, that's like... That's awesome. And I want to highlight some of the guys like that. And, and, and you know, I, I'm glad I got to do you and come out here and do, do your farm. You were the first one that said yes. Um, because it's kind of a, I mean, it's kind of intimate. I mean, it's it's kind of, I'm coming out here, I'm getting in your business a little bit. We're uh, looking behind the curtain. Yeah. And and so I, I understand that there's a, you know, I'll do my best to respect respect your story, respect your, your, your process, your method, and respect your service. And I thank you for your service. Thanks for bringing such great uh, cigars and bourbon and and absolutely warfighter, uh, warfighter tobacco. I, I I've I've had other cigars. I mean, Fuentes were like my my go to, and I had a Fuente the other day, and I'm like, oh, it's not a warfighter. I don't I don't buy cigars. I don't smoke cigars very often. But like you know, I've been deployed and people have offered them to me. So I don't know, but this is really smooth and really good. This is a Maduro, their 50 Cal Garrison Maduro. Real short cigar, kind of a quick burn, um, as far as like, it's not like one of the long, big, huge sticks. But man, I, I like the 50 Cal because it's a darker wrapper, which is a little sweeter. It's not as bit, and not as bitter. Um, you know, I got into smoking cigars when I was in Saudi Arabia because everybody was sitting out at the smoke shack. Yeah. And it's like, every, that's where everybody hung out. And it's like, I didn't smoke. Right. But I didn't want to sit in my barracks room. The meat was amazing. The steak was awesome. I can't. I can't believe <laughs> that was so good. That of course, was so good. I'm not gonna. You know, it was 
we killed it. We smashed that. It was yeah. so good. Yeah. It's like so. Just eating it with our fingers like cannibals. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes that's the best way to eat it. I think that's a that's, that's cowboy style. Oh, right yeah. There. Just, oh, yeah. Just eat it right out here. You can't. I mean, you can't beat cooking a steak on the ranch and. and on the fire. Fire, meat. You can't beat Cigars, that. whiskey. Come on. You can't beat that. It's a great. You know, it's a great way to decompress after a long week, you know, and uh, and uh, to just let it out. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate hey, man, it. I appreciate you coming out, and you did an excellent job cooking that steak. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate you letting me do it, and uh, appreciate the steaks. Those were wonderful. And uh, look forward to seeing from you in the future, getting some more beef from you. And... Uh, if you want a if you want a, a longhorn cattle skull with the oh yeah I've and got stuff on skulls it. and I've got hides. Um, we try to do the whole animal approach, so um, I have to find another person to do the hides because uh, the previous guy uh, doesn't do them anymore. But um, I have about five or six still in stock, um, and these aren't the Wish.com ones you see online that are made by little Chinese kids or whatever or South yeah. American. These are yeah. real, made in Georgia by a Georgian artisanal. You know, a uh, taxiderma shop, uh, make some great rugs. Now, I've got skulls, too. I've got a variety of different sizes of skulls. Yeah, the one I have on my channel, on the under my backdrop, that came from here. It doesn't have the, what are, the, what are those, the sleeves, the horn sleeves? The shell. The shell? Yeah. It doesn't have the shells on it, but it, it's it's still the, the... But I have some with the shells and everything that uh, just, you know, they're clean and you just got to polish them up. Yep. But uh, um, if, you're one, if you're interested in some of that stuff, if you, you know, even if you're not... If you're not looking for the beef, um, he's got the the hides, and the, if you want like a throw rug or a throw uh, uh, blanket for the for the sofa at home, or you're wanting uh, some wall art for the man cave with the with the skulls and stuff, man, hit him up on Facebook, uh, Tackett Family Farm. Uh, he'll hook you up, and uh, man, just thank you so much, and I uh, I appreciate being out here. It was, it was a good time, time, man. It was a good time. I'm glad the weather cooperated, and uh... absolutely, yeah, it was horrible yesterday. Oh. It rain like cats and dogs. Started early this morning. I've been up since like two or three. Yeah. But uh, anyway, well, hey guys, like, share, subscribe. We need to do another one. I need to throw something in there and, and hopefully it makes the final cut. My wife is also a 20 year Air Force veteran. Yeah. So at some point in time, we need to find something to have you back out and maybe cook something with her. Um, she loves the little filet mignons. Maybe we'll do a little filet mignons. There you go. That sounds good. Um, and, and, like a sweet potato or something, and uh, we can have have you out again. Let bacon, you go through do some asparagus. other ones, and we'll do oh, man. we'll do a cook uh, and and talk to her about doing it. I just I always want to make sure I don't leave her out when we're doing this stuff. Um, she's it, part of this as well. She supports you. Yeah, she I couldn't she, do all of this a, without her help. Yeah, she takes care of the house while you take care of the farm. <laughs> hey everyone, so sorry about that. Uh, video cut short due to uh, lack of storage on the phone. So I will do better next time. I have probably an hour and a half of video from the cook with, uh, with Chad um, out of the Tackett Family Farm. Um, it was a great day. We had talked about a lot of stuff, a lot of different places, to from supply chain, national security stuff, to just farm life for him, um, meat, all that kind of stuff. And I will probably do a video where it's just the long form of just everything kind of unedited. Um, but I, you're going to be getting a, this shorter edited version. Um, but we talked for nearly an hour without the cook, after we cooked, um, about just all kinds of stuff, his military service, his life, um, and and then about veterans um, and things like that. So just you know, keep that in mind. Um, check it out if you're interested in seeing the long form. Take, keep a, uh, an eye out for it on the channel. Um, this will probably be in there, so if you're getting to the end of it, you're probably at the end of that, that channel as well, of that, that show as well. But um, uh, this is something new. This is a new uh, new venture with the uh, mobile kitchen setup where I'm interviewing um, a veteran uh, who is in the supply chain or just uh, someone that I wanted to talk to and cook with. Um, when I go to Normandy in France, I'll be probably doing something similar to that um, uh, in the next month. So keep an eye out for those videos as well so but thank you all for for watching um, like share subscribe comment below if you really like this video if you want to see the longer stuff when I do a live interview um, I know the 
shorter is better with the with the just the cooking and my me telling somebody's story. But if the live interviews, I think could probably go longer because there's a lot more stuff there that could be gone over. But anyway, let me know what you think below. Have a great day.